Hey guys, hey, welcome to another episode of a Film Life Vlog and happy 2020! So, remember when I shared uh, the unboxing of this uh, scanner right here? which I got from our local thrift store. Um, I picked it up for $80. It was in the box, fresh in the box, and unopened um, film scanner. And it just so happened that I was um, looking for a film scanner for this home here, because we have our other home in Fort McMurray, uh, where I work, um, which has our, my main scanner is there, but most of the time I'm developing film in this house here um, and therefore I needed a scanner here because it's kind of cumbersome developing film in this home and then waiting to go back to Fort McMurray to work in order to scan the images there. Before I continue, take a look at this beautiful camera that I'm currently shooting with. This is the Fujika GR. It's a small, tiny rangefinder camera. Just a really beautiful camera that I fitted with the WOC300 flash unit here. And I just like how this flash unit sort of matches the design of this camera. This can flip up like that as well. It's just a really nice setup that I have going on here. It's nice and small. And I have the flash on because I'm actually use, uh, shooting photos indoors of my family. But I thought I should show this because I'm having a lot of fun with this camera. Okay, let's get back to our setup here. So something interesting just happened. Um, I was trying to turn this unit on and it wouldn't turn on. I was quite frustrated by it and I uh, almost tore it apart. I got my screwdriver, actually opened the bottom of it. Um, but while I was doing that, the top part of the, of the scanner literally came apart. And it's actually designed that way is what I've just found out. And I'm just gonna show you, there was a part that I forgot to plug in. You know what guys, always follow the instruction manual because the instruction manual mentions this over here, that you have to plug that wire in. I totally ignored that. I was thinking that this was meant to connect to another, com like the computer, like the serial port, but I was wrong. This top part is totally separate from the bottom part. And the only way the bottom part communicates with the top part is through this cable here, which you do have to plug in right into this. So now that I've done that, I'm going to connect the power right here, and I'm going to turn on the unit. And when I do, the unit is on because I can hear it do the initiation. That's the sound it makes. So it looks like we're in business here. Let's get back to getting this thing set up properly. So what I'm really enjoying about this scanner is these quick menu items on the top of the scanner here. For example, if I press this scan negatives right there, pay attention to the screen here, the window pops up here, and it says scan negatives to file. There are many different options that I can choose from. Slides to file, documents to TIFF file, documents to email, picture to file, picture to email. So many different options. So it's next day and um, I must say that this software, uh, the software of, for the scanner is absolutely atrocious. 
really really bad guys don't buy this scanner I've been trying unsuccessfully to scan 35 millimeters last night it looked like it was going to scan them at 1200 ppi and so I was actually quite excited it was like oh finally after so many hours I spent most of yesterday trying to make this scanner just scan normal strips just two strips and it wouldn't work so I had 12 exposures in those two strips I went to bed last night because it was taking hours just to scan those at 1200 ppi and I even tried third-party um, apps there was one app which seemed to be doing relatively okay but it's still not as good as the software that comes with my Canon as a film scanner, the Canon Scan 9000F. So I'm a bit conflicted. I mean, I spent $80. I thought it was a good deal. But this scanner is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> absolutely atrocious. Don't buy this. Don't waste your money on this. How frame did not work on this uh, scanner. 35 millimeter is so hard, especially expired film. Forget about it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're gonna just frustrate yourself for expired film as if your film is not perfectly flat. And the software is slow and simply terrible. So this scanner is an absolute. No, for me. I try my best. I give everything that I review a fair shake, but I cannot pretend to like something if I don't. And unfortunately, I just don't like this scanner at all. If you want a good scanner for a good price, go for the Canon Canoscan 9000F Mark II. Great scanner. It will automatically detect uh, your exposures so you don't have to unlike this one here even though it it is supposed to do it I haven't seen it I honestly it's been really bad for me <sighs> so this kind of is really testing me because just as I <laughs> recorded the last segment it seems like it's finally completed one cycle at 300 ppi and it looks like really that's the only resolution that I can reasonably scan photos in without going crazy 300, 300 ppi seems to be what is given me it auto detected the frames which is excellent and the photos that came out actually look decent so, oh gosh, I've gone through so many emotions on this, on this uh, scanner here. And I don't appreciate that it put me through that. But it seems to be working decently now at 300 ppi. Would I recommend that you buy this scanner? No, because there are better scanners out there. The Canon, Canon Scan. 9000F Mark II, which I have in my home in Fort McMurray, is a better deal, much better software. The scan quality on this looks pretty nice though, I must admit, even at 300 ppi.
So, that's where I am right now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for joining me. And as always, have a wonderful day and stay safe.